What is up, guys? Welcome back to another weekly watch list video. I'm so excited to have you here. I just want to get right into this. And before I do, though, before I do, I have something huge for you. I'm hosting a free trading webinar July 16th. If you're interested in signing up and getting registered for it, make sure to click that first link down below and you can get signed up for my free webinar. If this all goes well, I plan to do free webinars every single month so you can get the best free education out there. So if you're interested, make sure to click that first link down in the description and get registered for my free trading webinar. All right, moving into this week, we do have some news, nothing seriously crazy, but we do have some news. So let's get into that. Tomorrow we have 10 a.m. news, 11 a.m. news, and 3 p.m. news. So all during trading hours. I hate trading when there's news like this. However, it shouldn't be that hard to navigate through. Tuesday, we have 6 a.m. news, which won't affect us at all. Wednesday, we have a lot of 8.30 a.m. news, which will help us build a bias for that day. And then we don't have news until 1 p.m., 2 p.m. later that day. So we will be able to trade pretty much without news impacting our trading. Thursday, we have a lot of 8.30 news. We have initial jobless claims, core PPI, PPI year over year. Uh, we have 2 p.m. news. We have 6.45 p.m. news. That won't affect us at all. On Friday, we have 8.30 news and then 10 a.m. news, consumer sentiment. Every day besides Tuesday, we basically have news impacting our trading. It's always great to know the news before you go into the trading week, just so you don't get caught up in a big move up or down. Now let's get into our watch list. Up first on the watch list is SPY. We have a supply level around this 442 area. We have a demand area around this 435. And then we have a secondary demand around this 432. I also have a higher risk potential bounce level around this 437. And some of you still have questions on how I trade my zone. So I definitely wanted to clarify this in the beginning of my video. I look to find reversals for my supply and demand zones. Reversals have more probability. However, for these zones can act as continuation zones. So the best way to execute these zones is to wait for the five minute candle closes to give you entries and exits off the zone. So either way, if it used it as a continuation zone or if it used it as a reversal zone, we can capitalize off the move. Just waiting for five minute candle close confirmation has helped me execute better and has prevented me from getting faked out. A lot of the times you're gonna see liquidity sweeps, traps and other things in the market. So just be patient, wait for candle closes to give you confirmation. On to my next watch, of course, it's QQQ. I have a supply level around this 372 area, and I also have a really good resistance level around this 370 area. I really like the 370 because it's a whole number. It sounds really good. Psychological level, a lot of traders, I bet, will be looking at it. Definitely look for a potential reject around that 370. Now we have a demand zone around this 362 area. And then we have a secondary demand zone around this 358 area. And a lot of people have been asking me questions about supply and demand. So I just want to clarify a little more. These demand areas are supposed to be areas where I believe buyers and limit orders are sitting, waiting for price action to get back down to this level to buy it back up and push the price upward. So hopefully this week, we see price action move down into these zones. We start to see buyers step in, give us candle confirmation. Then we have all the things lined up to take a trade. Watching both SPY and QQQ has been so important and effective in my strategy because they both present great opportunities and also the options just move so smoothly. I highly recommend if you're not watching these two stocks to watch them every single week. Moving into my individual watch list, it's pretty simple for this week, but my first one is Amazon. And this is like art to me. We could see consolidation, but in this consolidation, what do we see? Clear supply and demand. I love when supply and demand looks like this. Obviously, reversals have been a clear play for these supply and demand zones. As you can tell, we've respected them multiple times, bouncing off each one. But as we all know, supply and demand 101, the more the zone is touched, the less effective it is. Because essentially supply is where all the sellers are at, demand is where all the buyers are at. The more it's touched, the more the orders get filled, the less strength it has. So moving into this week, I don't wanna ignore the reversals have been there. However, if we open up around this 130 level, we are very close to my supply area. If we could see a push above and candle close, I'll look for a rally based rally off this zone for a continuation to the upside. Again, what triggers my entry is a candle close and confirmation of the level. And depending on your risk, depending on your strategy, you can use the 15 minute, the 10 minute, the five minute, or even the one minute. It's all about how you personally like to trade. But as far as this week for individuals, this is my favorite. And I definitely expect a nice move out of Amazon this week. My next on watch is super simple and it's Apple. I actually see another zone that I didn't draw out and it would be up here around this 194, which is a high. So we have this 192 supply area and then we have this 194 supply area. The demand would be this 198 area. 
This isn't my favorite setup. I would like to see if we can potentially reverse out of this demand area, but we are opening very close to it. So again, wait for candle confirmation. I can't stress that enough. By doing that and also by doing that and also using price action to give you a good stop loss, those two factors right there will set you up for success. But looking at Apple right now, I think the highest probability would be the high 194 area supply reject. And I'm saving the best for last. I mean, I don't really trade it much, but you might and you might love it. I know degenerates love it. And that would be Tesla. Tesla has this huge, huge daily gap. As you can see, the last few days, we have been testing this gap. We bounced here once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Looking at the daily, if we could fail that level, we have a huge, huge potential move down. I do have a supply area around this 280 mark. I definitely think 280 is also a great psychological level for Tesla. So ultimately, I'll be watching this gap for certain and then also the supply area around this 280. That's really all I have for you guys this week. I hope you guys enjoy these videos. I'll continuously do them every single week. I've had so many great comments about them. And honestly, I love doing them because some of y'all are trading the exact same things I am and charting everything out yourselves. If you stayed this far into the video, I have something special for you. If you go register for my free trading webinar and comment under this video when you're done, I'll be giving away $100. So make sure to register and comment down below. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed week. Trade safe, trade smart. Peace out.